The Golden State Warriors, much to the surprise of myself and many other people, actually lost to the Memphis Grizzlies yesterday in the last play-in tournament of the year. Meaning that their season is officially over, they are not making the playoffs. Once more, as I'm going to be saying anytime I mention a game like this, I do have my reaction to this game over on my second channel, and I'm going to be doing this for the entirety of the playoffs, so go subscribe to that channel. But now that the Warriors are out of the playoffs, that logically begs the question, what is next for the dubs? This roster is at an interesting point where they have some conflicting timelines but also a top 15 player of all time who is going into his mid 30s. This team also has a bit of a treasure chest of assets that they can dig into to build a roster in however they see fit so there's multiple directions the team can go. So what is next for the Golden State Warriors? Let's talk about it. Before I continue on with this video, about half of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed, so if you fall into that 50%, then please subscribe. Also drop a like on this video, it only takes one second and makes a massive difference. Once again, I'll remind you, there is going to be plenty of playoff content on this channel for the foreseeable future, so if you're looking for playoff coverage, subscribe to this channel. This roster has a couple important questions to answer. One Warriors fans have been pondering, which is, should they fire Steve Kerr? Does Klay Thompson coming back make them a contender? What do you do with your assets, and who do you draft? Now, as for the question of whether or not you should fire Steve Kerr, to me, the answer is no, because Steve is built to be a contender's coach. The biggest problem with Steve Kerr this year that led to many people calling for him to be fired is that he was not properly taking advantage of Stephen Curry. Despite the fact that the roster was not good, like, at all, he was still playing and having the sets be similar to what they were doing when they had Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson playing, and when instead it's Omari Spellman and Jordan Poole, that's a little bit questionable. Though gradually as the season progressed, he learned to play Steph as just, look, we're going to give you the ball every time. But that wasn't his mindset early. And actually, it was as soon as that shift happened that the Warriors got significantly better. Who would have known? But being that Steve Kerr does have a good system, a good motion offense built for a team that is contending and has the talent to contend when they have that talent, which they hopefully would by the end of this offseason, he'll be just fine for that. When your team is good, Kerr's weaknesses as a head coach stand out significantly less. Does Klay Thompson coming back make them a contender? I don't think so. A good playoff team? Absolutely. No hesitation in that one. But I don't think Clay coming back alone takes the Warriors from not making the playoffs to a team that can beat anybody in front of them. There's a long way to go until they get back to that point that they were previous. And Clay Thompson alone is not getting them there. So how do you address that? How do you get from just good playoff team to contender? Well, in my opinion, you absolutely cash in on your assets. This year's lottery is going to be huge for the Warriors. Their own pick is going to be like 13th or 14th. It might jump up to like 10 or 11 at the absolute most, but they also have the Minnesota Timberwolves pick that is top four protected. As of right now, according to Tankathon, that pick has a 37% chance of being top four. So the odds suggest the Warriors will be getting a pick that will land somewhere between four and 10 in the lottery, as well as their own late lottery pick. So let's say you have like the sixth pick and the 14th pick by the end of this lottery. That's where both of those picks are currently projected. You could actually use those to trade up a little higher in the draft potentially, but really, I think just overall, you should trade those picks as well as James Wiseman for a star. Now, this is a debate that has also been happening amongst Warriors fans, and to me, the answer is pretty clear, even though it seems to be a controversial answer. As good as James Wiseman could potentially be, 
Right now, I'm focused on the present, not five years from now. James was very not good in his rookie year, really to no fault of his own. While he showed flashes of being good due to having no summer league and really just being thrown right into the NBA out of the gate, dealing with injury, dealing with inconsistent minutes, all of this stuff that's not Wiseman's fault, he was not particularly good in his rookie year. Again, it's not his fault, but... As of right now, James Wiseman is not helping your team win much, and even two years from now, I don't think he's going to be increasing their ceiling all that significantly. While at the same time, Wiseman getting less opportunity is hurting his own career. So honestly, I think for both parties, parting ways would do each side a big service. So those two lottery picks, James Wiseman plus throw in Eric Paschal, who's kind of young and I don't think particularly that great, but some team will think they can mold him into something. You throw that together in a package and you can absolutely land a pretty damn good star player. Now, the one problem the Warriors have going into this offseason is the question of who is that star? Because unlike many other offseasons, there's no clear, oh yeah, this guy is going to be available type of situation. But the thing is, if I know anything about being an NBA fan, if I've learned anything over the past couple of years, crazy shit is pretty much always going to happen. We thought last offseason was going to be pretty tame, and then suddenly James Harden is a traded player as soon as the season starts and there was rumors all over the offseason. Russell Westbrook has moved. There is always going to be something. I literally made a video saying that the 2020 offseason was going to be terrible like I thought it was going to be real bad, but some drama happened and it wasn't bad. That's just kind of how it happens. And based on the volatility of stars on teams these days, how often they want to change sides, someone will become available, I'm sure. If I could just point to a maybe example, you could have said a bit ago, Carl Anthony Towns, but as soon as they got healthy, they were a 500 team and are probably gonna look to build upon that. And I think Cat is gonna stay loyal to them for at least another year under those circumstances. Maybe the Pacers have a fire sale and you can get Sabonis, but being that Sabonis is just 25, I could see them being like, nah, we'll just hold on to him. But that could be a big get, and I'll use that for my hypothetical just for the sake of it. But I just want to reiterate, even if these young assets, those lottery picks, James Wiseman, can be real good in a few years, and maybe you can make the case that, hey, you need to prepare for when Steph retires, I would rather just take full advantage of when I have a prime Steph and Clay and a not too far from his prime Draymond Green still on my team healthy that can probably be at the very least the core three of them good for another two to three years and I mean really really good. View it as one last dance if you want to though you can't title your documentary that. You can get another ring out of this core absolutely if you go all in so as far as I'm concerned you go all in. Really, the worst part of all of this is that you're probably going to be losing Andrew Wiggins in the process because you have to have some sort of salary filler. And really, Draymond Green and Klay Thompson and then obviously Steph are the only other major contracts on this team. So of those guys, you're trading uh, Andrew Wiggins. I've seen some people suggest that you should trade Draymond instead of Wiggins, but I think that'd be dumb. After all that though, I actually don't think depth should be too big of an issue as it was this year, especially if you can get some pieces alongside the trade that you make. The breaking out of Jordan Poole as well as Juan Toscano Anderson is rather significant for this team's depth. And because of them, I think this team's depth's gonna be pretty good. Jordan Poole could probably be a six man of the year candidate as early as next season. But let me just walk you through a perfect Warriors off season. I'm going to be using Sabonis as the example for this as well as a trade that involves TJ Warren on top of it but Pacers fans don't fret I completely understand it's possible they just stick with their guns and hold on to what they have this is just me reaching for a hypothetical of a star player on a team becoming available and let's just say this offseason at Sabonis could very well be somebody else you trade the number six and number 13 pick along James Wiseman, Wiggins, and Eric Pascal for Demonis Sabonis, TJ Warren, and Jeremy Lamb. I think that's a fair trade if the Pacers are completely resetting. That team immediately becomes a contender with no hesitation. 
Steph as your one, Clay as two, TJ at three, Green at four, and Sabonis with Jordan Poole as your backup guard situation, Jeremy Lamb, Juan who can play both forward spots, and Kevon Looney as the backup center. That's a best case type of trade, but really you could get a two, three, or five and all of those fit into what you're doing. I think Clay Thompson can play small forward for the most part. So if you have to get a guy who's definitely a two guard, it's okay to do that even with Clay on the team. And a center, of course, is always going to be available spot on this team. But maybe you don't want to get a center because you like running small ball so much, so you get a three or whatever it may end up being. But if some sort of star player at any position besides for guard and power forward becomes available, then you can absolutely trade for that player and make your team significantly better. And by the way, as for who they draft, because you might not necessarily be able to make a trade on draft night, do not make the same mistake as you did with Wiseman and try and draft for fit. Draft the best player available without hesitation because making that mistake again would be big. Like if they had LaMelo Ball right now, they could probably just hold on to him or they could trade him and get God knows what in order to win another two, three championships if they had just held on to him or drafted him that is, but they didn't. So what's next for the Golden State Warriors? I am anticipating and hoping for a big trade that will launch them into contention alongside Klay Thompson coming back from injury. Again, subscribe to this channel for consistent playoff content, but shout out to Rudy for editing this video, but that is the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this and cue the outro music. <laughs>